It's time to welcome the Wine Ladies. With Georgia and Suzanne. An entertaining hour topped up with great ideas about wine, where to dine, anything and everything to do with the vine. Great conversation, lots of laughter, guests from all walks of life, food and wine, music, art, sports, and much more, all on The Wine Ladies. Hi everybody, it's us, The Wine Ladies. I'm Georgia. And I'm Susanna. Welcome to The Wine Ladies, one sip at a time. And of course, to all of our friends and fans on Facebook, Twitter, and thewineladies.com, thank you for liking us, and we <laughs> like you back. <laughs> And first of all, I want to thank everyone that came out to our fantastic party last week, mm -hmm. the Wine Ladies Holiday Mix and Mingle. It was an astounding success. We had such a terrific time. And you know what? We even had a little bit of a friendly competition going on there, didn't we? We did, absolutely. And you know what, Suzanne, actually, not that it really matters, mm. but um, the way, as I recall, I believe that it was actually my group that got the winning answer before your group. Of course, in my group, Tuscany, you guys know who you are out there. No, no, I think actually it was my <laughs> group that won, the Chateau Neuf du Pape group. And, uh, but of course, a little bit of friendly competition to between sisters is okay, isn't it? Absolutely. You know what? It doesn't matter. It was an incredible night. Um, and everybody walks away as a winner, right? Everybody got a prize and had a wonderful time. So um, now moving on, uh, you know, there's something else uh, that is sort of in the wings with the wine ladies. And uh, our next event we are very, very excited about. We are going to Las Vegas. <laughs> That's right. Las Vegas, baby. I love Las Vegas. We were there uh, I guess back in August, yes. and uh, we are going to be hosting an event there, emceeing mm -hmm. for Club Curry. It is for the Child Focus uh, VIP Founders Celebration and Donor Dinner at the New Vintners Grill on the Las Vegas Strip. Yep. Uh, so if you want to get some tickets to go to that, go to www.curryclub.com for tickets. And I think they've got some uh, hotel rooms that are available at a reduced rate now until November 30th as, mm -hmm. 30th as well. You can make it a whole weekend. It's going to be a fantastic, fantastic time. Absolutely. And Suzanne, we're going to be staying over for New Year's Eve in Las Vegas. How spectacular is that? Uh, the, the fundraiser will be continuing. They've got tremendous entertainment, unbelievable bands, and lots of incredible, wonderful things, lots of champagne flowing New Year's Eve. So it's clubcurry.com for tickets and uh, come and join us in Las Vegas. Well, let's raise our glasses to that as well as to our guests on the show today. Cheers, Cheers. everybody. And in our glasses, we're not going to reveal that to you right now. We're going to learn about that just in just a little bit. All right, so not too long ago, I attended a wonderful party. It was mm -hmm. a launch of the Jack Daniels Tennessee Honey Liqueur, and it turned out to be quite the buzz, if uh, excuse my pun <laughs> oh there. Oh my gosh, she's getting this corny. Uh, that same day, I met a gentleman by the name of Tibor Zabo, mm -hmm. whose family has been in the bee business for the past three generations, and suggested that we talk to a winery here in Ontario that has been, do that has been producing honey wine. Right, which we thought was an absolutely sweet idea. So we were intrigued and we thought that you guys might be too. So please welcome from the award-winning winery, Rosewood Estates for Vinifera Wines, as well as for Honey Wines, the operations manager and the beekeeper, William Roman. William, welcome. Thank you, thank you, Joe. thanks. Great to have you here. Thank yeah. you. Now, also at the launch party that brought all of these parties together was the Jack Daniels Tennessee Honey Liqueur. So joining us in studio today is the managing director of Brown Foreman and spokesperson for Jack Daniels today. Uh, please welcome Brad Fletcher. Hello, thanks for having us. Hey Brad. Thank you gentlemen for coming Good. in. Finally, we get all together. This has been like a really difficult <laughs> uh, group to get together. Assemble. Yeah. What are the bees keeping you, honey? And uh, Brad, <laughs> the what's up with you? Honey's keeping me busy. Busy like, <laughs> busy like a bee. Busy like a bee. Now, actually, when Georgia was doing a little bit of research on the show, we I think we figured out why that where that expression comes from. Because apparently, a bee needs to pollinate a million flowers to make was it a a pound, of a pound of honey. Or is it an ounce? No, a pound of a honey. Pound. So they say it's supposed to be about a million trips for a bee to go to a flower and back to actually make one pound of honey. I have wow. a new uh, respect respect <laughs> for honey. I had no idea. They're very hard workers, those bees, uh, and they only actually live during the summer for six six weeks at a time. After that, they uh, work themselves to death. And uh, another wow. expression Sounds of why. Sounds like the wine ladies. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but you know what one of the differences are? I, I read also that those bees travel so much, it's like as if they've gone around the world four times. Yep. We have a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> it's a lot, of, a lot of air miles, that's for sure. Yes, for sure. Yeah. So tell us a little bit, let's start with you maybe, mm -hmm. um, William, a little bit about Rosewood uh, Winery. We know that you guys make, yes, you make honey wine, but you also make some beautiful award-winning wine. So tell us a little bit about yeah. Uh, the wine. Uh, yeah, started. we've been making wine since 2006 in, uh, in Beansville Bench in Ontario. So mm -hmm. it's just in the western edge of Niagara. Uh, we have an award-winning winemaker named Natalie Spitkowski. She's been with us since we've started, which is basically 2006. Right. Uh, and we have a selection, I brought a selection of wines for us to try. Mm -hmm. So first, uh, as we pour it in the glasses, we have is the Riesling. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called Seuss Reserve Riesling, and so it's a very nice, light, white, refreshing uh, Riesling drink or Riesling wine. Uh, okay. It's really terrific. Uh, and it's made in a very interesting German style that I, if you're interested, I can talk about further. Sure. Um, if not, you want to try it and I can get to that afterwards. Yeah, if not, well, just, just tell us what you've brought to sure. start with. Uh, so the Riesling itself is an off-dry style Riesling, mm -hmm. and we actually make it in a way where as we crush the Riesling grapes, we get all the juice, and from that we hold back a portion known as a Seuss Reserve, mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll ferment the bulk of the wine dry and add that Seuss Reserve back to the finished wine. And okay. so that's where when you try the wine, you'll see that it's really youthful and energetic, a uh, nice sweetness to it, really nice balance and acidity to it because of that addition of that natural juice itself. And, uh, what, so el and what else did you bring? Uh, then I also bought a, a naturally fermented Pinot Noir Reserve. Uh, it is our most prestigious award-winning wine now. It's won two gold medals for us this year alone wow. at Canadian Wine yeah. Awards as well as the Audible Wine Challenge uh, mm -hmm. this just this, like, about two weeks ago. Uh, then I also have uh, Mead Royale, which is a very sweet honey wine. Uh, not our sweetest, but quite sweet. And then I also have Mead Blanc, which is a honey wine that's fermented with Gewürztraminer juice. Uh, so this is a very unique, interesting pro product because it's using grape juice to actually ferment with honey to make an alcoholic drink. Mm. Uh, so it's no longer a mead nor a wine. It's kind of some, something in between. Well, I'm uh, looking forward to trying that. I've never yeah, had that sure. before. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah absolutely. Yeah, we're, we think we're one of the first ones in Canada to be doing it with both Ontario products. Okay. Uh, so it's uh -huh. a really interesting little uh, project that we've undertaken and we've done a new batch this year where we're using Pinot Noir juice to ferment it with honey. Okay. Uh, so that version will be called Mead, mead Noir versus what we have here, which is Mead Blanc. So you have to add a yeast, I guess, to yes. get the to get the fermentation happening. Yeah, exactly. Just like with okay. making whiskey, you know, you have to have a base uh -huh. wine, and that's how you ferment whiskey. Um, but you always need yeast. Yeast uh, without yeast, you will not have alcoholic fermentation. How's it which, right. Exactly, you need it. So, uh, you so need it's that very important. Definitely. So tell us a little bit about Jack Daniel's Tennessee Honey. What's well, the premise behind that? Well, Jack Daniel's, as you know, or may know, uh, has been in existence since 1866. It's my girlfriend's um, favorite drink, Jack Daniel's. Well, and that's what she orders all the time, <laughs> Jack Daniel's, JD. Well, it's interesting because Jack Daniel's does have a, a, a large um, uh, consumer base that are considered loyalists that just love Jack Daniel's. That's what they drink all the time. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting, you mentioned uh, your girlfriend because women have, um, over the years, have, uh, women in, in alcohol beverage have taken on a whole new sort of a perspective as a consumer because um, the growing the empowerment of women over the decades mm -hmm. has brought them forth now where even like yourself um, really involved with the information and the knowledge behind wines and spirits and we're finding now a lot of women um, coming towards spirits so um, Jack Daniels Tennessee Honey is actually something that is just um, uh, simply Jack Daniels uh, old number seven whiskey with a little bit of honey and honey flavoring added to it to, to create a so liqueur. So it's not really a whiskey though, you'd say it's a liqueur now, this well, is it, what it, this it's is. Well, technically it's a liqueur, mm -hmm. but in fact it is made from the, the actual Jack Daniels Old Number no. 7 Tennessee, Tennessee whiskey. Okay. Um, and I so understand there's a story behind, the, I mean Jack Daniels was a person. This Jack was Daniels a guy. was a person, yes. He and was a real uh, person, was, really? Well, yeah, he was a real person. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but I know there's some interesting <laughs> legends around this guy, Jack Daniels. Like, uh, you know, how he met his fate. Brad that, is that was what a little are bit you going sad. to say next? No, I was going to say because it starts off with the number seven. And there's a couple different stories on how even the number seven. Well, there's actually more than up. a couple stories. Is oh. there? Well, we want to hear oh. a couple of okay. them. Well, I mean, uh, they're, they're, uh, Jack Daniels, yes. Jack Daniels is a real person. He was, uh, was born in 1850. Um, he actually, at the age of 13 years old, uh, took over a, um, uh, a distillery from someone, a Reverend at Call, a Reverend wow. Call at 13 years wow. old, and at 16 years old, he actually created Jack Daniels, his own special whiskey. So um, yes, wow. uh, in those days, they started. Uh, they started young. He started he young. Started his business young. He was an well, entrepreneur. Well, you started at four. <laughs> <laughs> well, keeping bees, yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, um, it is. Um, it is um, old number seven. It comes to. Um, there's a lot of theories behind why he called it Old Number Seven. Right. It, it could have been the seventh distillery in the county. Um, some people note that he maybe had seven girlfriends. Yeah. It was Number Seven that was one that was special one in his heart. Yeah. Right. Um, so no one really knows. It's um, it's um, it's a little bit of folklore to to actually what it really it's means. Stuff that but, legends uh, are made of. Ex and uh, <laughs> as you know, Jack Daniels is a legend. It You're is right. a legend for sure. Absolutely. And I understand they don't really know his exact birthday, so they celebrate his birthday for the whole month of September. 
I we like do, the we idea. do know it's in September. We don't know what day, so we do celebrate all September. Right. Every day we celebrate his birthday. So. That's a good excuse to celebrate. <laughs> I was born in November. What day was it again? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's fascinating. Okay, well, you know, maybe we should start off with the Riesling then. Um, um, sure. And then we'll go back to the honey. I don't know whether this was in the way or not, so. So I could pour some of this right here so for we us. Wine glasses oh, here. Sure. Let's okay, wine glasses. Glasses. Sure. I mean, to hold and. Uh, I can just put those out here for you if you'd like. So then, um, William, this would be like about a two, maybe, on the, yes, on the sugar code, would you say? Yes, this would be about a two on the, on the sugar code. Okay. Yeah, so that's uh, equates to about, uh, I believe it's 19 or 20 grams residual sugar. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not uh, too much, but it's just enough to wet the palate, uh, and it keeps this. Uh, thank you very much. Oh, oh yeah, Oops. okay. Oh, well, we can grab that glass oh, sure. for, for you. A little bit there. there you go. Um, go ahead. So okay. it, it keeps and preserves all the acidity to mm. actually help cleanse yeah. the palate still towards the end of the uh, tasting of it. So it's a, it's a very nice, refreshing wine, great for summer sipping. Uh, and we really enjoy it. You know, people really, really think it's fascinating because of the unique characteristics that it has with the nice citrus lemon fruits to it. Yeah. Very food friendly, really easy to drink on its own or with food. Uh, I like to call it a nice introductory wine with people because yes. it's a really nice and easy drinking. And so that way people can get really excited about wine because they're like, oh, wow, you know, that was really sweet. I really enjoyed that. And yeah. uh, they can see themselves drinking it more at home and exploring and branching off to other new wines. I actually tweeted about Riesling today because it's a uh with American with Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think Riesling is a great wine to serve for a couple of reasons. First of all, like you say, it's very versatile. It goes nicely with turkey as well. And I think, like you said, that when usually at, at events like Thanksgiving or Christmas, you have a whole bunch of people that come and not everybody ne is necessarily a wine drinker. Mm -hmm. So Riesling is a great wine to serve. So it sort of pleases many, many palates on exactly. different levels. I don't yeah. think you get tired drinking this. It, it it's very refreshing. Yeah, it's uh, and again that's the nice crisp crisp acidity mm -hmm. that you have, you know, and I find a lot of nice uh, tropical tones too, a nice mm -hmm. nice citrus fruits as well, and yeah, uh, like it makes that. it really, really really easy drinking. So this drinking. is just yeah. available at the at the this winery. Is at the winery. Uh, this will actually will be available at the LCBO Vintages come January. Mm, okay. uh, so this will be available yeah, in January, and then it'll be available across vintage shops in in Ontario. That's okay. great. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. I like nice. that little little bit of the acidity in there. It really mm -hmm. make, it makes it stay alive and very. <laughs> You very know, vibrant. Very vibrant, uh, exactly. You know, it's quite aromatic as well, so it's really nice and easy to smell and uh, it's really appetizing. Lovely. Really, really great. If you like cheese, this goes really good with like goat cheese and stuff like mm. that. It's, uh, oh, my favorite. It's really terrific, yeah. What's the price point? Uh, this is $15 a bottle. Okay. So it's, uh, so it's, awesome. it's a modest price bottle yeah. so that, you know, meant to be almost like an everyday sipper uh, for people to enjoy and they don't feel like they're breaking the bank. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a very nice, easy drinking wine. Now, we're going to go to okay. a short break, but when we get back, we're going to have a lot more honey discussions but you know what <laughs> I think I'd, what I'd like to show our viewers is George and I last year we actually visited a BA Pierre mm -hmm. and uh, donned those what do you call those those uh, uh, we call them veils uh, or veils. just our, our, our netting our veil. nets so, uh, but they're a veil essentially so during this commercial break I think we're going to show a few moments uh, maybe about a minute or so of our experience at the BA Pierre we'll, we'll be back in just a moment 